Hey guys, it's Avenger. Angel, welcome back to the channel. And today we're proving again once why de Havilland don't make bad planes. Yeah, this is the Dove, the DH-104 by Rob Richardson. Now, this is freeware and yeah, it is not going to be up to the same standards we expect from some of the commercial releases we see these days. But you know what? I don't care because it's a de Havilland Dove. Now, this is by the same guy who made the Dragon Rapide for MSFS, which was a, a MSFS native version of his original fsx one this is the same for the dove it is a fs native version of his fsx one so it's got limitations and functionality limitations of fsx but as you can see it's got chocks it's got steps it's got a bunch of things let's go take a look at it because the cockpit is not stellar but i've seen far worse I will say that now. I have seen far worse. If we go back in here, because I don't have my water rudder key bound, we can actually pop the door open. Mmm, polygons. Delicious. Do you like a few of those? Now, like I said, this is free. So, before anyone accuses me of selling out to corporate flight sim, no, there's no money involved in this. I just downloaded this off Sim Outhouse. There'll be a link in the description. You'll need to sign up to their forums. Uh, to get access to it but you'll be able to get it from there for the time being and the exterior model i will say is gorgeous it looks really stunning and i like the fact that even the engine cowlings are open now there is no manual included with the aircraft and i'm pretty sure there'll be some sort of controls and functionalities i will not know in fact there's quite a few that i won't know but i will do my best to take her for a good trip today we'll fly just to the west here i'm i'm summering I should say, well, wintering, I should say, in Austria and Switzerland, whilst Alaska's cold and dark. At least here it's cold and light, which is great for making videos. Which gives me a nicer winter experience in the Alps. So, beautiful little aircraft. Of course, pilot's not visible until you're inside it. And, of course, we looked at the cabin already. It's, it's a toilet! It's important, okay. Bathrooms are very important. And is that a sink? That's a sink, okay. I was thinking that looked very weird for a second there. But I like how the kitchen and the, sink, the toilets are in the same space as the door. Because it's the door and you're pooping next to the door. That's going to be awkward. We have seats. We could take six people. Now, the Dove, whilst we have a look around the cockpit here, uh, was a British short-haul airliner designed and developed by de Havilland. And it was the monoplane successor to the pre-war Dragon Rapide. So it's a spiritual successor, a literal successor there. Uh, came from the Brabazon Committee. A report, of course, which wanted more British short haul feeders. So it was a very popular design, considered to be one of Britain's most successful post war civil aircraft. Over 500 were made, and including the military variants like the Devon for the RAF, the Sea Devon for the Navy, and a few for other overseas nations. Now, a little quick look see doodle here at the general specifications of the Dove before we get ourselves going here. We'll pop back outside for some pretty views of. Of Dove rather than, you know, cockpit view there. Da, 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 da. Incidents and accidents, we don't want those. What we do want, however, is specifications. Crew of two, passengers, a capacity of eight. Uh, so we're talking max payload of 1,400 pounds, 670 kilos. We've got a length of 39 feet or 11.9 meters. Wingspan 57 feet or 17.3 meters. Height 13 feet, 4 meters. Now, it has, in terms of performance, maximum speed of 200 knots, cruise speed of 162 knots, stall speed of 64 knots with flaps and gear, we'll remember that one, and a range of, in nautical miles, 760, which is really reasonable, to be honest. Service ceiling, 21,000 feet. Takeoff and landing distance, talking takeoff, 2300, landing, 1900. So a very efficient little aircraft. Let's take it for a spin, shall we? Now, there are various functionality limitations in this, of course, that I've yet to find a way around. We have got some nice little checklists that are just here on the wall, but I can't seem to find a way to get those to actually do anything other than exist. And the viewpoints don't actually seem to do anything, which is unfortunate, but there you go. So in terms of everything else, we'll turn our batteries and systems on with our little buttons here. Now, the fuel pumps and other factors do seem to be connected to the magnetos and various stages of that. So I don't actually know if I'm able to actually control a lot of these functions because they should, you know, fuel pumps you think would turn on. They, however, do not. 
and the start of being a separate button. So I'll leave the fuel pumps up there. So that's off. And you'll notice if I hit the starter, once I've actually set the fuel here, so we'll get our throttles. And you know these engines are actually very, very interesting sounds. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's using his original sound set from the Dove. See what I mean? It starts to, even when I... There's a good chance this is being caused by my honeycomb. It has done it in the past, but this is where we have the magic control E. I'm not ashamed to use it sometimes. It does sound like someone's taken a chainsaw to a badger. It is apparently authentic. It sounds very British. It rumbles and it whines and it just groans at you. So it did sounds and appreciates authentically at least. Okay, let's go. Oh, got like systems on here. We don't have a lot. We have an ADF. We have some Navcom radios, and there are no mod cons and frills in this aircraft. You're not going to get a GPS navigation system. You will have an autopilot, though, which we'll test in flight. But we are going to get ourselves out on on our way here. We're just doing a very simple look over this one today. This is not exactly a complex aircraft. Let's just turn around here. Just left engine. Tight confines here by... Salam says uh, airport buildings. So today we're heading over past Innsbruck and we'll be heading down to Fussen Glider Field in the south of Germany. Should be a nice little uh, trip, some very scenic views for us to test out the Dove. And she is loud. She's absolutely loud. I will say it does feel a little bit like a 2D panel looking at the forward cockpit of this thing. But there really aren't many aircraft like this in the sim. In terms of retro short haul aircraft, so it is nice to have it. Oh, well, there's no a ton of functionality beyond, of course, VORs and ADFs. It's what they would have had. Would be lovely to have a GPS, but obviously we don't have that. That's fine. Nature of the beast. Windows don't click or open. Now, like I said, there's no manual included, so it's hard to tell. But you're never quite sure. I looked around at the forums, I didn't find any descriptions of any of the features I was explaining about, but of course that may come with time. And the Dragon Rapid did not exactly have a destruction manual with it either, neither did the Hunters, so one of those situations. No, the Hunters are David Garwood, I do apologise. The Hunters are David Garwood. No, hang on, was the Dragon Rapid Dave Garwood? I seem to think it was. I'm very confused because I'm pretty sure someone attributed the Dragon Rapid to, to Rob. I am almost positive it was, it was Dave. I know Rob has brought out a couple of uh, early post-war fighters in the past. So it's going to be one of those, hmm, who did what, how many times to who. Okay, we'll taxi out onto the runway. We've got one notch of flaps to take off here. We're about at our takeoff distance here for Salamze with... 2400 feet so we'll spin the badges up real quick and get ourselves ready to rock and roll and release and off we go keep an eye on our airspeed here we can release 70 knots for takeoff airspeed's alive and looking good and the runway's coming up real quick here 70 knots and she peels off nice and easy Nose gear is always a favourite of mine on the dub. And that side up folding landing gear on an airliner. But look at this thing, it's a beautiful little aeroplane. And that's still wide open. I don't know why that's open or how to close that. I wonder what we do need to press. To press. Let's pull our power back here and get us into a comfortable setting. Now, with this being a legacy sound pack, I'm assuming. I'm noticing a lack of variation in pitch here, or tone at least. And whilst we do have prop levers, I'm not seeing a general response on our RPM instrumentation. I 
only able to bring it back to the green arc by bringing it all the way down, almost to idle throttle here. But there you go, yep. My throttles are close to being idled out here. I just managed to get this thing down. Carpet window's a little bit dark as well. It does feel quite spacious in here though, which I'm sure is not what the actual dev felt like, but it feels rather broad. At least my eyes are giving me a better perception of things. The very retro look is certainly different. This spring goes up a little bit here. So she climbs really well so far, and even with this low throttle setting to get ourselves into the green arc for the RPM, it's still pulling some speed here. We're still climbing through 130, and we're settling down on a heading. Now, I've not found a way to click away the actual in yokes here in front of us. The parking brake, of course, is there on the side of the yoke. So I don't know if I can actually find a way to see some of these things better. I've not found any switches in the cockpit for things like the door or for the... out there. It could well be the tail hook. That's often assigned to various things. We could find out if that's the case. Okay, so we do know what our PE binds are for water rudder, which is control W. And that doesn't do anything. And control H does not do anything to R engine cowling. So, neither of those two we're diving down. Neither of those two is going to solve our little problem, unfortunately. That is a downside admittedly. That engine is very well cooled on, on the right. So, number number two engine should be nice and cool for us. Completely happy with that situation. But, uh, a little surprised as to why I can't work it out. Again, I'm having to literally do this on the fly. I've looked around and clicked everything so far beforehand when I was testing. But I haven't found an option to do so. And um, I missed to find a reason as to what is causing it. Because nothing seems to actually indicate any kind of control functionality for that. There's nothing on the back wall here of the cockpit. Although we do seem to be quite far back in our seat. And low down too. Why not? At least we're slightly better off in terms of positioning here. In-flight actual response is good. It actually handles very well. We'll see when we make an approach. We'll do a touch and go at Innsbruck before we head on to Fussen. That's going to be our only opportunity there. So we're bang on course right now for Innsbruck. Per my uh, knowledge. So we should be good here. So this valley forks down here, then we join the next one just above it to the north. It's a relatively straight shot for us. Things look a lot more green to our north. So right now we're still hitting about 130 indicated airspeed. about one or two on the boost. So a very British kind of post-war styling in terms of its functionality and behaviour. In terms of altitude, we're doing pretty well right now. I think we're about 9,000 feet. And that would be uh, correct. Coming to about 10,000 feet here. Not coming up to 9,000, I should say. And she's not struggling in the slightest. about here. We should be clear of the uh, terrain. Now, with it being freeware, I could forgive a lot of the kind of whoopsie doodles and uh, inconsistencies in the aircraft in terms of what it can do. It's free, so you can't really gripe. You know, the guy's giving this to us from his own sweat, blood, and tears of time, and I'm okay with a lot of inconsistencies in that regard. I'm okay with a lot of things wrong. For me, it is good enough visually, more than good enough visually, 
It certainly looks the part and definitely doesn't look bad. Let's see if we can get this set properly. Let's zoom in here. Okay, that means we should be able to go boom, uh, altitude and heading. And it should hold all those aspects for us. It has and will. I'm going to resolve that question we had earlier on in the uh, in the video. About the Dragon Rapide. So we go to the Warbird Library at Cement House. Lock myself in again, of course. I will answer this live as we find it. So whilst we fly along here, it should intersect with Innsbruck uh, momentarily. So if I was to go to hmm, MSFS downloads, or 2020 downloads, civilian props, this is probably where it will be. We have the Dove. We have Tiger's DC3 mod here. Very good stuff here at Cement House, by the way. And we have the Dragon Repeat. Which is Dave Garwood. So I do apologize, yes. Dave's Dragon Rapid is out there, of course. I think someone accidentally attributed the uh, dragon to Rob Richardson. It is not. It's Dave Garwood. I was, I was sure it was, it was Dave. Because he did the Hunters, too. Two very great freeware developers, of course, that release things really for free to people all the time. So wonderful when they do that. Now, that one has been updated if you haven't updated it yourself. I'll be doing that myself now. You can download that updated with new VC glass and uh, a few fixes and magneto fixes for it so I do want to update that. The Dragon Rapid is an aircraft that stays in my hangar at all times. It is a fantastic aircraft. Love having it. And uh, of course there's some fixes there for the Sterling flight model if you've got the uh, Virtual Call one. Or virtual Call, sorry. The uh, Vitavia one I should say. So worth grabbing if you uh, end up going over there. Otherwise, uh, it is uh, going to be just up to whatever you want, you want to do. Right, so... Past this ridge line in front of us, we should start to see Innsbruck. I really wish I could work out how to close this. I really do. I wonder if there's a... No, none of the view positions do anything that would help solve this problem. Can I slew outside and close it by hand? I can. Water rudder handle up. I see. So we can close it by hand. Water rudder handle up. Which I'm assuming means... This one back here is water rudder handle down, which is why I had the wrong things entirely. Interesting. So my back door was closed. They're on the same water rudder handle up. So this opens and that opens. I had this closed in the entire flight, but that was open. So the two animations are both connected but separate. Because somehow an animation that was on the same combined did not pick up as being on the same thing. So that is very weird. Not sure how that works out, but it did. I've right, got a VOR we're going to track once we head north from here. Let's go 108.4. Let's plug that sucker in here. This one of our navcons 108. There we go. So we'll look for here. Eh. One up with four. Now, how do I switch you out? Because I don't know how to actually switch these radios out. Because there doesn't appear to be a way to transfer the frequencies. We have a backup and an active frequency, but I can't affect it. Unless it's picking it up now. Which is not. We are picking up via GPS signals, so you've got a flight map planned 
in. You can actually follow it, it seems. I'm not seeing click spots here on the ADF, which is making that... It's reading out, but I'm not seeing any click spots to actually change it, which is unfortunate. We've got comms, standby, and active, but we need to actually use the keybind. So I suspect there's a lot of keybinds you're going to have to use to operate functions in this aircraft that aren't clickable. So that's the downside, of course, but it's one of those things when it comes to a free aeroplane. There'll be limitations. You will need to find those uh, keybinds to actually operate it safely. Let's turn off Otto here. We don't need his assistance anymore. Turn my head back on. We should be joining the valley just to our right here that contains Innsbruck, which will let us do a quick touch and go before we head on to Fussen. Often when it comes to an aircraft like this, I like to do a more raw take with it, a more raw look at the aircraft where we really kind of dig into it and see how it behaves, how it operates, functions, missing features. And with this one not actually having a manual, well, you're going to discover a lot of the same bugs I am, a lot of the same problems, inconsistencies. Now again, it's good, it is good, but some of the features included aren't logical and some of them don't work necessarily how they're meant to. Obviously things like the chocks and parking brakes and stairs are when your battery and power is off and you're on the ground. All well and good. But of course it would be nice to have a selectable like a switch or a click swap for that to operate as well. The same with the door and the cowling. Very useful to have those. And probably slightly more dialogue on how the actual start sequence works. Because if it is something I'm doing wrong, I'd like to know. And if it's something that's happening because of the honeycomb, I'd like to know. Although, it, it shouldn't be. Because it should be a simple starting sequence. And you can press the starter buttons themselves. It's as though it wasn't supplying fuel, even though the fuel was actually introduced to the aircraft down there. Now, I will note I have got um, cow flap levers, but I can't actually operate them with the mouse click. I suspect I need to be in legacy mode for that. Innsbruck should be to our left. Just past here. See, so yeah, you have a lot of headroom on the sounds. Above, like half throttle up towards the firewall, is all just running riot. visually it's more than sufficient. I don't like the fogginess of the, the glass though. I would have preferred slightly clearer with some scratches but I'd take slightly clearer on its own. Obviously having it slightly darker makes you know that there is definitely glass there but I think that's a bit of a unfortunate one in that regard. Now we we'll see this is set to Interesting. Now GPS mode switch won't cycle. That won't cycle at all. Maybe the autopilot needs to be on, I don't know, but it wasn't cycling, which won't let us take it out of GPS and into like VOR capture mode. Which is unfortunate. Okay, dropping down to the valley here. Delta Golf Delta is going to be our destination once we arrive. I don't think it's going to be too far. It's not. And Innsbruck should be coming up ahead of us somewhere. But if we look ahead of us... I think it's around the bend up ahead. That would make the most sense. And again, I don't like the seating position. The seating position feels a little bit flaccid. This is not quite right. Let's turn my head off here. There we go. 
go. Let's turn it sideways so we can move forward. And just pop ourselves up a notch. And if we are here, it is much, much more natural. Even just a slight change at like that makes a big difference to how this thing feels with the head seated in the right place. So there's definitely some room for improvement on a version 2 release. Obviously this is an initial release, so there's going to be things that will be different, things that won't work or will work. I can understand that. So those are things I'd probably like to see slightly differently. Innsbruck should be around here somewhere. Most likely around the bend up ahead. up there. See at this lower level I'm not actually seeing any impact at all from the RPM. Slight but not a lot. It really doesn't do a lot to moderate our RPM on the engines so that might be something worth looking at. Yep, yeah, Innsbruck's going to be around along the head of us to the right. I think with uh, the time of this uh, flight, we might call this a day at Innsbruck rather than heading on to Fusen. I know people have asked me to head to Innsbruck in the past, so you get your wish today. <laughs> yeah, it's been a very rough and ready one tonight. Um, I like it, but it has got room for improvement, a lot of room for improvement. And it is free, I call it room for improvement rather than faults. I wouldn't say don't buy it. I'd say if you fancy trying it, download it. Try it out. See if you enjoy it. I know it's probably going to stay in my, my hangar. I don't know whether I'll fly it as often unless some things get fixed, but it has potential. The ADF, lack of clickability, is a bit unusual. Uh, the radio inability to change the frequencies there is odd. Unless I go to click bind and find the frequency swap button, which I guarantee you is what will do it. But it does provide you with some challenges. Very pitch sensitive too. Not sure if that's realistic for the dove. Just dial a little trim in here. Keep our nose in a balanced position. So landing will be interesting. We've got a lot of room at Innsbruck, so that shouldn't be a problem for us, but we'll see how she behaves. The prop discs do look quite invisible from the inside. You can almost see that there with a slight flicker, but that's about it. Although the exterior modelling does look good, actually, from in here. I can't complain about that. Oh, bugger, I pressed the recenter thing again. Which screws up my positioning in the cockpit. So as we're ready for our back again. We'll just fix that whilst we're here before we have to line up again. Yep, I'd definitely need new camera positions for this before I was actually really happy with it. The camera position does feel off in its standard position. Of course, it does include the actual aircraft CFG, so you can tweak the aircraft to your heart's content. I think that is ours ahead on the right. That is Innsbruck. Damn it, I pressed it again. Okay, no messing around with the head position anymore. There we go. Okie dokie. That works just fine. Because we're on a long final here to Innsbruck, so we'll pull the power back here. Let our speed start to bleed down, props forward. We'll let the speed start to bleed off as we'll descend down over the city. It's slowly coming down, so it's quite a draggy aircraft when its power's off. down to about 100 here. Yeah, the visual kind of photorealistic you know, approach to how this thing looks is okay. The panel's a little bit too shiny for my taste. It's very shiny. The side panel's definitely meant to be fabric and they're very glossy. A little normal map and we could have gone a long way in there. Okay, get down. The sounds do feel distinct though and unique. Realistic or not, they are very unique in that they are not just pulled from a default aircraft. They are, I believe, the original FSX Dove sounds, so there could be realism to them. OK, 
okay flaps notch one it's a long drag in for the dove let's give it some trim here keep ourselves in position yeah definitely room to, to maneuver in terms of improving it um, I'd like to have seen more functions. Obviously, free is free. I'm griping. I'm trying to find options here and things I'd like to see differently, but it's it's got merit. It's got potential. But it could be more. There's some junk freeware out there. There's some, some great freeware out there. This could be great if it was improved and there was some work to the interior. So some cockpit texture kind of refinement in terms of its glossiness and materials. Um, not normal mapping of the fabric. A way to pull that checklist up and actually see the checklist properly would be nice. Uh, click spots on instrumentation down there would be important. The ability to change the radio frequencies, maybe use the ADF. Or if there is a way, explain it with some sort of manual or some system like that. Drift exciting to the right here. Knots, which is actually okay where we want to be. Winds are pretty calm here, so we're good either way. We've got one or two knots, which is nothing to write home about. Down over a snowy Innsbruck. Now, this is live weather in MSFS, so whether or not it's actually the snowy here right now, I don't know. I, I don't suspect it is this snowy because it is the end of February. It might be. It could be. It could be. So it looks patchy enough to be realistic. Okay, the second notch flaps. A little bit of power here to compensate. Prove our lift trim is coming in. A lot of trim needed here. There we go. Oh, we're slipping too slow there, so we need more speed. What cruise power we had for a bit there. Let's keep our speed up there above 64. Because that should be about our stall speed, so we want to be careful with that. Yeah, the fact I'm needing. I'm going to pull some flaps out here because to keep that speed up, we needed to have a lot of power in here. So that's the zoom back up again. So that one extra notch of flaps made a huge difference to how much draggy. The yeah, aircraft was. How draggy the aircraft was. I apologise. Terrible English. Okay. Okay, we're looking good now. The set towards the runway is good. trim up. Push it right a little bit. In fact, we'll just slide her right a little bit here. We're a little low for this, so it shouldn't be slipping an aircraft on its first descent in over a city. This way lies um, new park plats. Yeah, this is definitely dragging its arse in. That's my fault. I'm too low. So I'm going to power on here and lift us up a little bit. There we go. Nose down here. Okay, we should be able to just pull the power back to where we were again. And let the nose drop in here and do what she wants to do. So we need to go sideways a little tad. She slips like a brick. This thing drops like an Austrian man's Landis costume. The second he's had a beer. Okay. Centering on that bulge in the nose here above the uh, air vent for my runway positioning. We'll find out how good that is for us in a moment.
This will be the longest running ever for me. <laughs> I don't normally take this long on a final. Dear gosh. But it has been very stabilized, aside from our few whoopsies. Okay, we're about that stall speed now, which is odd that it's still behaving itself. For science, we're gonna hold the power here. And hold the pitch. And she's dropping like a brick. So rather than stalling, she just mushes and drops. Okay. Can I get it to do that? Not the altitude to be doing this at. Okay, it just mushes and drops. It drops like a stone as soon as you stall. There's no kind of wing dropping, it just falls out of the sky. Touchdown. No real wheel sounds there from that. And we are down. Okay. I'm very placid on landing. No real drama whatsoever. Again, the stall, it just seems to drop. It, as soon as you actually get to that kind of low speed, rather than dropping a wing, it just mushes and goes down. Which is predictable and well behaved, but it's like an elevator. A freight elevator with the cables cut when you actually let go of it. As I turn off here, we get ourselves parked in here at Innsbruck. For a free aircraft, it's certainly worth a download. Absolutely. I see nothing wrong with that. Um, there's been plenty of free aircraft I've had to control the start, and I have no qualms with that. I'd like it to work because it does seem to actually intend to work. So that'd be nice, but I definitely would like if we have no GPS functionality, I'd really like the radio frequency to switch beyond having to go find key vines or everything. I feel like we've got a castering nose wheel on this thing as well. Because now having to use differential braking and thrust to get us steered, which may absolutely be the case. We should only actually have, yeah, it should be a case of apply, in typical old British fashion, it should be a case of apply full rudder in a direction and parking brake to actually get to steer. It's one of those nose wheel steering only engages once you actually force it to. So I'm using the throttle here to steer us more precise. We'll pull ourselves in here. Find a spot and shut it down. But it's worth a try. It could definitely do with some fixes. There's improvements that could be made that would make it a very versatile little aircraft. And I think with the navigation systems working properly with um, tweaks and nudges and fixes here and there, I think it'd be a reliable little retro short haul hopper. I'd certainly enjoy it. I think right now it's, it's fun to play with, but it's definitely initial release territory and could be better. I think it's good, it just deserves more. It's got the grounding there, the foundation is present to make this a really good little airplane. It just needs that little bit of je ne sais quoi. A little bit of TLC to finish her off. Now, come on you pig, steer for me please. There we go. Parking like I'm a float plane. <laughs> there we go. Well. And of course, my head tracking turning off at the wrong moment has decided it wants to angle that down. There we go. Let's have a look nice and straight on the aircraft. Worth a download, worth a play. And as you see, the power off, the stuff all appears. It would be nice to have another click spot so we could have it shut down with that parking brake on. And yeah, parking brake connection there, see? Everything appears and operates like that. So... I think go download it, go try it out, see what you think yourself. Flies certainly more than well enough and makes an interesting addition. Could do with some tweaks. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.